Wow. Look at that chasm. My advice? Move fast and don't look down. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Mark of the Ninja. Oh. Guess I'll have to find another way around. Go on. I'll catch up. This place is ancient. Watch your footing on those ledges. They don't look very solid. Today we're going to be playing more in depth with some of the catacomb mechanics they introduced us to last time, like the dilapidated grapple points and those noisy, rickety uh, wooden walkways that crumble under your feet. I can't see the bottom, if there even is one. Oops! Oh, I just fucked that up real bad. <laughs> How did that happen? Aura, please continue your thought. Oh shit! No, okay. Well, uh, walking over the sarcophagi, we can get the idea that there is a little bit of hollowed ground beneath them. A ninja must never fear death, but Tatsuji refused to die. He was corrupted by a power that had no purpose. I give my last coins to an old scar-cheeked merchant. What have I to lose? That corridor is full of poison. If you move fast, it won't kill you. I just hope there's fresh air on the other side. So this is our first foray into the poisonous gas that we saw, and it got it got name checked a little bit last time. Uh, so we have a short oxygen meter uh, that appears whenever we are in the gas, and once we come up for air for a second, that refills. Will notice if you ride along too. Also, this puzzle is real cool. Because uh, we just have to ride up here, wait at the right edge, and then instantly start lockpicking. Uh, the lockpicking upgrade helps just make that feel a little smoother. As it should. Like, the more you feel like this fleet-footed ninja, uh, the better it is. Those are, my, those are some of my favorite upgrades. You won't always feel the effect of it in, like, a, a practical, what is the most efficient, min-maxed way to play the game. There's some points where, you know, having the, the uh, quicker lock picking is a real boon to letting you get through situations easier. But it's more just a flavor thing for me. You just do everything smooth and effortlessly. Uh, these guards. You'll notice from this level on, on uh, Star Wearing Gas Masks, which, remember from the description of the Smoke Bomb upgrade, the one that adds that choking effect to them, uh, is negated by the masks on top of letting them uh, walk around and patrol in the poisonous fog. So we are gonna ride this and stick to the underside because the lasers are coming from up top. A really quick way to eyeball that is to see where the sparks are, and always be on that side. Uh, the sparks always hit on the op- Whoa! God damn it. I was trying to go too quick through that. Uh, the sparks always hit on the opposite side from where the laser is being projected. So it's always a really fast visual cue so you know which side to be on. Uh, which you have to do that a lot in this level. I think you also do that right here, unless this is the part with the guards, and the laser part is next. No, this is the part with the guards. So to the right, to the left, and then back to the right. Just always kind of going from the underside to the side that you need to be on. This is the part with the lasers. Okay, so first we are going to hang out on the right side, then we're going to switch over. Just crawling underneath, letting the, uh, the big crate block the lasers for us. This one, they alternate every other set, so instead we have to climb up from this side of the wall while it goes through. Unscorched, unchecked, and then we have another uh, one of these puzzle rooms. This is one of the most puzzly... Just a puzzle for the sake of having a puzzle kind of rooms in the game. I still like it, though. Uh, then we're going to get this to go back the opposite way. Wait at this lever, which will stop the lower right crate. 
and block the right laser. Oops, oops. Go down and come back up top. This is going to stall out halfway there, but from here we can cling to the ceiling. Also, I forgot how much I like that running animation. It's too bad you don't get to see it too mu too often with the after images. Oh, hey, it looks I really good. It's just past the next room, but there's a rusty old gate blocking the way. There's a way to open it from your side, but be ready. When the racket starts, every guard down will come running. All right, so this part right here, there is nobody in this room yet. Uh, and it's a, a large room with a lot going on. But first of all, we're going to just take all this out for no real reason. I Unless something goes horrifically wrong, I'm not going to come back down here. But just in case, take all those lights out, hit the lever. Now guards will flood the room, and this becomes a, a survival sequence where you are trapped in this room, and you just have to hold out as guards and guard dogs flood the room. Uh, and you have to hold out here for 90 seconds waiting for that hatch at the top center of the room to open. Apparently someone noticed while I was perched up there. Uh, this is where I really like to hang out, though. This spot right here is really, really nice for waiting this out. Uh, the main thing that you have to worry about is that guard dog that you can just barely see. Uh, his his sniff radius patrolling towards us from the left. So this is not a problem. Uh, because remember, that doesn't go beneath them. And once the dog gets to this side of the room, we can always just kind of drop down and wait for him to path back to the left. The other thing that makes this more challenging over time, as go what even caused that alert? I have no idea what caused that alarm. I mean, we already don't get the alarm bonus because we did that stupid thing earlier. But still, what the fuck? What what happened? Oh well. Well, we have six seconds left. Uh, I was going to say, the other thing that makes this more challenging over time is that if you're hanging out on the lower levels, where you have a little bit more freedom initially, they will start flooding the room with gas, uh, le uh, level by level. Thanks. Now let's get out of here. Also, something the guards can do now is if they spot you near the vents and they get suspicious, but they don't go into the alert phase, they can actually throw gas canisters into the vents to flush you out. Uh, so we're gonna grab the, there it is, softened cloth tabby. So we can spend a little bit more time running, and then this Hisomu terror dart that we just got access to, which will send guards fleeing in fear, so but it's non-lethal. We made it to the inner keep. Come on. What an idea. The fear dart will not kill them. We can't let the count get away. Hey, this? Him, oh, whoops. Escape routes. And watch out. Looks like his best troops are on patrol. They won't be easy to take down, so do your best to sneak past them. I was a little imprecise with that jump and then crouching down to, to lockpick the vent, so it almost got me caught. Uh, that's something that I think is new to this level. No remember any instances in any of the alternate routes in the previous one where that comes up. Uh, but we now have locked vents in addition to the locked doors. And that can create some trouble. Uh, especially for how we are going to have to navigate a bunch of parts of this level. This Going this route will let us sneak up behind the sniper. Take him out. Uh, now we can either go the front way, in which case we have to deal with that guard somehow uh, and get through the door, or we can make this long jump and come up here. And then same deal. We want to go up and to the right. So I learned something in the commentary about how the AI interacts with noise, like so. Uh, and other facets of the environment, like when they spot a body. Anything that really should set off alerts or suspicion states. And it's that guards don't actually listen for sounds, or rather their AI isn't what's checking for a sound nearby. Rather, it's the... Oh, fuck. Messed that up really bad. 
Um, I'm gonna let that kill me and start over because I don't want that alert penalty. It's the environmental objects, like noises and bodies, that are constantly checking to see if guards are within range of them. Or like the, the sound radii are in range of a guard. And they do this so that multiple guards together can react to the same trigger, but have different responses. But I'm at a bit of a loss for why that's more efficient of a solution. This didn't work out the way I wanted. I was having a really hard time. At least he, he patrolled over the vent so I could get that kill. Um, I was trying to, to aim that at the wall, but it was just being finicky. Yeah, so I'm at a loss for why that's a more efficient solution. So if anyone has any programming knowledge or could explain why that works the way it does, I would love to know more about it and share that in the future and credit you and stuff. Uh, this is an explanation that I, I think could really do with some elaborating on because it sounds cool and I'm always down for like creative solutions that that uh, seem counterintuitive at first but in the end are ultimately like better solutions to a problem that's I, I find that stuff really cool but I just don't understand this very well uh, what I'm wondering is why do that instead of having like say a pool of randomized responses when a guard detects a sound, if you want them to react differently. Like, let's say they each have uh, three possible responses they can do to a situation. And they individually will randomly make a one in three roll for how to respond when they detect some kind of uh, a stimulus or a trigger or something. Uh, I don't know better, so I'm wondering if someone can explain why I'm wrong or why my solution would necessarily be a less efficient one. And this might actually just have something to do with the specifics of, like, the engine or something else. But it seemed more like a deliberate design choice rather than uh, something they were kind of forced into by a limitation of the engine or something. Either way, I would, like, I, I would love to know more about that. Maybe I'll shoot uh, Clay an email and cross my fingers that they would be nice enough to respond. That would be super cool. Every now and then in an LP, something like that comes up uh, where I just have a question I want to share with all of you. Oh, this worked out so smoothly. Only thing... Oh, it looks like the lightning... Even though it looks like the flash illuminates the inside of it, a room... The exterior lightning flash doesn't actually light up the, the interior room, even though the door is open, and it looks like it does. Yeah, that's I know that's happened before, where I've, I've wondered about something uh, for an LP topic. I've, you know, emailed a, a dev and asked for some clarification, and actually gotten it. Like, I've gotten a response a few times, which is always nice. Helps me and it helps all of you. Did not help that guard. Uh, before we journey down there, I don't think there's anyone. But we took the light out regardless, just to cover our bases. That guy looks tough. Even a surprise attack might not bring him down. You'll need to daze him somehow before you move in for the kill. Yeah, we don't have the most effective means of dazing uh, these elite guards. So we're really going to try hard to bypass them non-lethally for the time being. I'm not scared of ninjas. I studied every martial art from Thailand and Tokyo. To I don't know why I was thinking there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna get. I'm gonna let myself get killed. Why did I think that was a good plan to try to edge myself over there instead of just dropping the chandelier from below? I was trying to get an angle on it from the second floor for some reason. I think my brain just shut down for a second. Okay, so we're gonna push this, and then... About now. Jump on, wait for that to path away, get to the ceiling, and there's also a grapple point over here. Just to make that a little bit quicker. A little bit less scary. Hey, Oops! Damn it. Okay, we're not gonna reset that one. Even though that was so stupid. Ah, I just popped out of the vent. 
before waiting to see if there were any footstep noises outside the door. Ah! This doesn't feel great. I mean, sooner or later, I was probably gonna raise an alert in this stage, because this one I find pretty hard uh, to do fully ghosted. But damn. Damn. Not like that. Ah, oh, it feels shitty. Come on! Oh, why do you hate me like this? There we go. It's just barely on the edge of his hearing radius. Now pick that lock real quick, get into the vents. Then we're gonna take the long way up and around. This car. There are a couple of ways to do this. Like, you can wait for him to turn his head. You know, he's leaned back against the wall. Checking both sides. And that will briefly give you an opening. No, 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 no. Okay. And the only reason we even wanted to mess with him in the first place instead of just going right up to this floor was that that artifact. Uh, can I hit the ceiling from here? No, my only option is to drop. Can't really crawl around it. Oh, and you notice that the uh, lightning mechanic is back from... Uh, not the previous level, but the one before that, I think. So we're slowly layering in the complexity and working with mechanics that we've seen before, but in brand new contexts where there's even more going on. We can't let Karajan escape again. We can either take out the pilot or destroy the fuel pump. Either way, he'll be trapped like a rat he is. It's really nice here that they give you the option to do this either lethally or non-lethally. Uh, and though, even though we have done so much of this level uh, with so much murder so far, we are actually going to do the non-lethal way of sabotaging the helicopter. Uh, 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 it's not great. I didn't think there was anyone that far, uh, that far out. I might come into this room. We're going to do the non-lethal helicopter sabotage, just because I think it's way more interesting than, than killing the pilot. I just want to make sure that he doesn't, like, snap his head back real quick. Uh, then we'll fall through, pick this lock, and then we are on our way to the generator. We're going to toss this unbelievably useful smoke bomb out take the power out that disables all the lasers, then we just have to work our way down. Wait, really? That caused an alert? I guess they heard the sustained foot uh, uh, running noises. And hearing that for too long causes an alert. Like, if, you, if they hear it just once, they hear the one loud football. They just become suspicious, but if they hear multiple in a row, that causes an alert. I didn't actually know that. Shit. I thought they actually had to have a line of sight on you for a second. Ah, oh, that's a bummer. Well, I mean, it's not like we got much of an extra penalty. Oops. We want to actually come back this way after my dude has finished pathing. Oh, no. Wasn't paying attention to which way that guy was looking. I thought I was going to slip through the door as the other guard passed uh, to the right, close the door behind him, and continue on my way. <laughs> that would have been slick. That would have been real nice. They're still okay. Yeah, there's, there's just so much going on in this level. It's really dense. Uh, and because they're now starting to really pile on... Uh, so many mechanics that we've been slowly accumulating and uh, been introduced to for a bunch of levels now. You know, it's getting all the more complex. It's getting all the more interesting trying to solve these these situations and these environmental uh, stealth puzzles. Let's try that out. Caused him to roll. Oop. Caused him to roll right below the vent though. Uh, you can also force the armed guards to shoot other guards in their terror. Like, those bullets do not discriminate friend or foe. Uh, so you can just get friendly fire going. You! All of you! Can't be 
with your lives! All right, thank you all for watching. Take it easy, have a good one. Also, remember to uh, leave a comment and also subscribe if you like my content and hit the like button. Thank you.